Welcome back to the Gilbertson Aero Factory. Today is Tuesday, the 27th of June, 2023. Um, this is episode 25, I think, of the fuel tanks. So, um, you know, after I, a few days of prep, um, the, the, the five days that I thought that it would take me to do the closing and sealing is clearly uh, way off. Uh, nonetheless, we're getting close to that point right now. Um, today's session is going to be kind of broken up a little bit uh, in the bits and pieces category. There are two things that I need to get done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mount the fuel sender on the rear baffle. I wasn't sure if I was going to do that first, but I am. Uh, and then secondly was something that I meant to do yesterday. I just uh, forgot to do it, which is to mount the fuel sender and anti-rotation bracket on the uh, access plate for the right tank. Those are pretty straightforward and small tasks to be done. Then I'm going to hop in my truck with the fuel tanks loaded up, go to the airport, hope that Joe is there to take one last look at my tanks before I commit to sealing them up. So we'll see how that goes. Then it's baffle time. And for the baffles, I am going to do that action in the dining room where the weather is cool and I have, um, more work time with the sealant. Stay tuned. We'll get into the bits and pieces and carry on from there. Um, no matter what we do or how we do it, we're going to build an airplane. Well, the usual morning cleanup commences. Uh, check this out. This is the leftover sealant from doing the end ribs. The first set I did, I mixed an ounce and a half of sealant. You saw that a lot of leftover sealant left over in that syringe. The other one was one ounce and it was barely enough. So maybe one and a quarter will make you feel good about doing it. At least if you're doing the tanks the way that I am. Um, getting all cleaned up here to start the day to do that uh, bits and pieces work that I talked about. But um, <clears throat> I definitely uh, went with the Scott McDaniels camp and I didn't use a ton of sealant. And so uh, when I say you know, an ounce was enough for me to install the two end ribs. Um, you may need three ounces, depending on what you're comfortable with. And leak testing still has uh, yet to occur. So uh, right now, getting ready to mount the um, the fuel sender and the baffle for the port tank. And uh, you saw me with the multimeter out there. So just checking the function of it. Um, there's a certain range uh, as it swings through its full arc. Um, I think one end is 30 ohms, the other end is, end is supposed to be 240 ohms, and that checked good. Uh, I do want to say on this, though, uh, you know, I, I made that um, doubler mounting ring to go on the inside of the baffle to mount the nut plates on so that the fuel sender bracket had something to attach to. That's totally overkill. If you're going to do this... Um, the, this mod to your tank, you don't have to do that. And most people don't. Um, what they very often do is just take that um, original access plate and use it as a template to um, mark the holes. And then they mount the, the nut plates directly to the baffle, which would have been a simpler thing to do. It would have mounted more easily. Um, <laughs> yeah, you don't need to do that. Uh but since I did it, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna go back and change it. Uh, so this is a pretty small amount. I want to say that I did a quarter of an ounce of sealant so that I could butter up this uh, bracket and um, and then also the the mounting plate for the sender, and then uh, still have a little bit of sealant left because I still have to do the uh, anti rotation anti-rotation bracket and then the nut and washer um, for the AN fitting for the fuel pickup. Um, everything went fine with, with all of this. Uh, for the fuel pickup, um, that's the one that's, that's getting mounted uh, for the right tank, the, the standard one. And if you recall, I purchased Vans pre-made uh, fuel pickups. They're like 16 bucks. Um, now that I'm done with it, I would just say, do that, do that. Why, why aggravate your life? I think that I would have spent a lot of time and 
and been unhappy with the results if I had created that uh, fuel pickup myself. I'd be worried about the dimensions and the bend and everything like that. And then also, is it clean once I crimped it closed and cut slots in it for fuel to come in when Vans makes these ones right here that are already perfect. So do that, 16 bucks. Um, there's enough work happening on this plane that you're in no danger of uh, buying their fuel pickup causing you to fall, fall below that 51% uh, rule for experimental aircraft. So uh, getting this done, torqued on, and yeah, I think that will wrap it up for the bits and pieces. This was about an hour and a half because, you know, I don't work fast and I always have a, have a mess to clean up before I start <laughs> working. So, um, yeah, we'll let this stuff sit and head out to the airport to get a progress report. Okay, part one is done. Uh, fuel sender for the left tank is mounted in the baffle and all sealed up. Fuel pickup for the right tank is mounted to the access plate, all sealed up. Fuel tanks are loaded in the back, heading out to the airport. Let's hope that Joe is there to take a look over my work before I get to work on the baffles. Uh, if not, Joe, I bet I'll be able to find another builder. <laughs> Anyways, I'll check in with you after. Okay, so that bit is done. Uh, Joe is a very in-demand dude, so I spent some time hanging out at the hangars while he was giving another guy a class on uh, the RV-10. Joe built an RV-8, he built an RV-10. Both of them are beautiful. Uh, so, uh, conclusion is, get after it. Um, we'll find out if it leaks when we get to that point, but for now, seems good to go for uh, finishing up the ceiling action. So, we'll go home and get that done. Okay, back in the Beats Lab and time to get to work. This is my list as it stand. If you recall a couple days ago, I said it was 16 items, then it turned into 17 items, and really now it's like 26 or 27 items because I didn't break them. Many of them, I didn't break them out between the left and the right tank. But I don't have much left to do. That was sort of a end-of-the-day look at it. Um, here I'm just doing prep on the baffles, and what you see me doing right here specifically a lot of it is unnecessary. I do need to scuff down the length of those uh, baffles for the sealant to get a bite on, but um, when you saw me on the inside of the baffle doing this right here, which is scuffing where the Z brackets will be, um, that's not necessary in the inside of the baffle. No sealant goes there. Uh, sealant only goes it's going to be sealed by the Z uh, brackets on the outside. So these ones need to be scuffed. Those inside ones didn't need to. So just to say, I don't know, maybe that added 10 minutes to my day. So now I'm probably taking that into the house. Um, uh, there's probably going to be some dead air while I um, go through the process of getting everything inside the house, the dining room, kitchen area ready for ceiling um because it's a big ceiling task and i i don't want to get caught uh behind the curve on the work time for that sealant where out here in the garage it's over 100 degrees and the sealant tends to set up more quickly uh doing the same thing now in the other baffle just so that it's prepared for the next day which is today um yeah, so just a little bit of prep and cleanup, moving the, I think I did the left fuel tank, moving the left fuel tank into the house, cleaning up the bits and pieces, and then uh, we'll get into it here. Um, pretty, you know, you have to have everything laid out all the time when you're working with sealant, and so that's kind of how this goes. So moving into the dining area and everything is laid out there's a lot of kind of back and forth here just making sure that i've got all of my ducks in a row because once you get sloppy with that stuff there's just not a lot of opportunity to um cleanly or efficiently make adjustments um and then also when you see me stepping off here for a while i've probably on the tv got the you know Scott McDaniel's vans um, fuel tank video on just reviewing again the 
sealing and closing up of the baffle. So I did two ounces of sealant, um, not knowing really how full that was going to make that syringe. I think those uh, syringes are like 35 milliliters. Anyways, I did two ounces, and um, I'll tell you that I had to do more. Uh, I think that as I was basically um, the tank setting up over there, you're going to do one solid unbroken bead along the just inside the rivet line uh, where the baffle skin attach is just inside the rivet line all the way down one length, flip the tank over all the way down the other length, and then you'll do the uh, end rib. Same thing just inside the rivet lines. And um, I got one length of the baffle flipped over got the other length of the baffle all the way down to like the last bay like the last six inches maybe is where i ran out so then i had to mix up another batch so that i could finish that path out and then do the end ribs and then you go a little where the corners occur you get a little bit heavy right there because that's a, a common problem spot so uh what's going on behind that uh, fuel tank right there. It's not really that interesting to watch. I'm just um, applying uh, a bead of sealant that's probably about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Um, and like I said, just inside the rivet line so that when you drop the baffle in, it will sort of smear and squeegee that sealant into place and i started with the top side of the wing to get used to doing this process because in the bottom side of the wing um, it's much more critical that that bead is properly placed and not too far in because there needs to be a clear path um, at the back of the tank for fuel to pass from one bait to the next and toward the uh, the quick drain so if you put that sealant too heavy or too far forward, you run the chance of obstructing that path and you won't be able to effectively sump your tanks. Um, that being said, this wasn't, uh, this was time consuming, uh, but it wasn't difficult. Um, the, those syringes really do make a uh, big difference in getting that thing down. So dropped it in place, taking a few pictures that really aren't worthy of the video, but, uh, I just wanted to get a look inside the tank through the access uh, hatch to see if, in fact, there was a good bead of sealant all the way around, at least in the bay that I could see, and and it was. So doing the same thing there. Get it all kind of clico together, and then, um, yeah, there, so, oh boy, we're, we're going to move into a period of monstrous frustration here. <laughs> um, the baffle, um, the outboard, like the top and bottom, I should say, um, rivet holes. So the, the Z brackets don't actually run from top to bottom. They cover five rivet holes, and then the two outermost or top and bottom holes, um, the Z bracket is in there. So those you need to go ahead at this point and uh, just apply a little bit of sealant to that pop rivet, get in there, pop rivet in, and that uh rivet puller was giving me fits literally on every single one of these rivets a piece and i don't mean like a, a little stump but like the core of the mandrel would remain inside the collet and i would have to use a pick and spend three or four minutes digging it, it, I, this was <sighs> guys this is like 10 pop rivets that probably took me 30 minutes to do uh, so before I start work today, I'm going to be making a run to Harbor Freight to pick up another um, pop rivet tool, a rivet puller, because this was, it. you know, it's a little bit of a race against the clock. You want, you're working with sealant that is setting up and you want to make sure that everything is pulled tight as it's doing it. And so it wasn't like I could go get another rivet puller while this was going on. This was tremendously frustrating i got it done but didn't leave me feeling very confident very confident about uh, doing the second tank so moving into uh le garage um 
got those all set and now it is to set the four because there are more rivets on the end ribs than there are in the middle um those four a and 470 ribs on each end um the top and the bottom and then do all of the skin to baffle uh ribs in those countersunk holes that's what i do right here the the set of clecos you see in the middle the the bronze clecos those are the uh where the z bracket will go the z bracket can wait um so those are just all loaded up with clecos all the z brackets will happen in a separate uh work session that's one of the advantages of not putting any sealant on the uh the rib flanges on the inside where the z brackets are going to mount you do put some sealant where those pop rivets are going to go just a little dab right there but the rest of it you leave it clean so that, that can happen in a separate session uh which will be yeah probably not today probably tomorrow today will probably just be all about doing this work to the right tank and then um i'll just save the z brackets and the access plates for an additional day uh not really in a hurry at this point so yeah this one all all went pretty much as you'd expect these are just uh squeezed uh and 426 rivets a whole bunch of them i think that uh each flange of that baffle is like 66 uh rivets from one end to the other but got it all done um it was nice to work inside the house where the temperature was moderately cool um and then here i am back outside at 8 30 at night and 102 degrees and real humid so but success i think uh i got this thing as far as i can tell <laughs> as far as i can tell mostly sealed up so we'll get a little beauty shot of the uh left tank looking proud of itself and then today we're going to get into the right tank um same work. So thanks for being here. I do appreciate uh, the support. Have a good one.